What's up everyone? My name is Melissa McCack and this is Teach the Teach, where I teach you how to teach a board game. And in this video, I'll be covering Blood Rage. So this is a how to teach video. I am assuming that you already know how to play this game and now you're looking to teach it to other players. There are plenty of ways to teach games. This is just one of the ways that works for me. And if you're looking for some tips on how to teach it, maybe this will help. Now out. I start so, off the way I start off with any game. I say, what is the story behind Blood Rage? What is going on? Why are we doing the things we are doing? And then I go into, how do you win? What is the objective of the game? You know, getting the most glory points. And then how the game ends. It ends after the three ages are completed. And then you could go right Usually into it. I get started with this game. Now this game is actually a little bit difficult to teach because usually what I like to do is I want to get players playing as quickly as possible. But with this game, there's a lot of information you have to give them before you can really start playing because the card drafting mechanic works so seamlessly with everything else that is going on in the game. And in order for players to make some sort of logical choice in what they want to pick uh, when they're drafting their cards, they kind of have to know a lot of what's going on in the game beforehand. So I'm going to try to teach it in a way that you are getting out the information as quickly and as efficiently as possible. And normally I start off with the cards. I just, I set out three of the types of cards before we begin playing and I show them, okay, I start off with the black card. These are upgrades. I let them know that. And this goes hand in hand with then their faction sheet. And I could let them know that you have a limit on all of your uh, faction upgrades, right? So you can only have like three clan upgrades, uh, two monsters, one warrior, so on and so forth. And you're going to let them know if you take one of these cards, these cards are going to be placed along your faction mat. And you're going to let them know in the top left corner is the cost and it costs you rage. At this point, you can let them know that rage is the currency of this game. Wahaha. And you're going to let them know that this is also its strength. And we'll get back to that in a minute. And letting them know that it has some sort of special ability at the bottom there. So those are one of the cards that they could come across. Then I go into your green cards, your quests, letting them know that if you complete the top half portion, you're, go you're going to get the victory points. And right here, it lets them know that this is the symbol for victory points. And then letting them know that if you also complete it, you can also get some sort of bonus effect down at the bottom. Lastly, you go into the red cards and just letting them know that this is going to be used for battle. So something like this, you could let them know that uh, during the battle, you're going to be comparing strengths of each other's warriors and leaders and monsters and all that. But at, uh, whenever a combat occurs, everybody's going to be able to place down one of these cards face down. And that is the bonus that you're going to get to your strength. And some of them have special effects that could happen on the bottom there. Cool. So now they know the three different cards that could come into play. At this point, you want to go into all the different actions that they could take on their turn. So the first one being invade and how invade it's the rage cost equals strength and that you could put one of your figures onto the board. So this is where you reiterate pretty much that these little red circles means not only their cost, but that's also their strength. And you're going to pay, so if you wanted to bring out a leader, you would pay, uh, I mean, not a leader, a warrior. If you want to bring out a warrior, it would cost you one rage and you get to place it anywhere on the map. At this point, you could let them know about uh, the different areas on the map and what they mean. So for example, we have, uh, what is this? Mannheim or whatever. I don't know how to pronounce any of these names, but the yellow region here. So everything outlined in yellow, that is one whole region. And then letting them know each region is uh, split up into different provinces. And then each province has their little villages. And this is what dictates the uh, limit of figures that could be in that uh, region or rather that province, right? So over here, you can only have three figures in there. Fair enough. 
So now you've explained the invade action, you could go over to the march action. Action. I'm just going along in the line with them, letting them know, okay, rage cost equals one, super uh, efficient there. And then you can move any number of your figures from one province to another. For this, I try to let them know that that means you could move any number of your figures to any province. It doesn't have to be adjacent. A lot of times games make it that you have to move adjacent. In this game, it's a little bit different. So you want to uh, possibly reiterate that and just emphasize that. Then you could go into upgrading and they should already know now this uh, action because you sort of spoke about it uh, when you were talking about the different cards that could come into play with the, uh, the black cards specifically. So they already know that this is one of the actions that they could take. Then it goes into quests. Again, this is something that they already sort of know. They now know about the quest and now they know that they could commit to the quest. This is something though that you want to uh, make specific because quests are free to do. Now, this is when you let them know that uh, for the rage, at some point, everybody is going to pass because they'll have zero rage or they could decide to pass and then they'll move their marker over to zero rage. Even if uh, an action is free, you still can't take actions even if you're at zero. So you're gonna to wanna to emphasize that, that even though there are actions that are free, if you are at zero rage, that's it, you're done, you're cooked. So then you go over to the pillage action. And this is where the bulk of the game is going to happen and where the bulk of explaining is going to happen. So usually I give some sort of example and I have uh, these figures out on the board maybe. So I'll show them, right, here's the board. And I'll say, okay, I have this figure here, my little warrior guy, he's on one of the spaces here. But let's say uh, my buddy here, Justin, he also has uh, his leader over here in an adjacent section. So what's first going to happen, that pillaging happens in phases. The first thing is a call to action. So let's say I'm gonna uh, call for a pillage and let's say this, uh, benefit is here. I would say, okay, uh, whoever wants to come on into this battle, they can do that. And it goes from left to right. You're going to explain all of that, letting them know about uh, the call to action. Then I go into the actual battle and letting them know this goes back to those red cards that we were talking about earlier, where each of us were going to compare our strengths. So my warrior is a strength of one. Let's say Justin's uh, leader is a strength of three. So now I know I'm bringing one power into the battle. He's bringing three. So now we're each going to get to play um, one of these cards face down. Nobody will know. And then we'll reveal them. And I'm going to get to add that bonus to my strength that I'm bringing into the battle. Justin might do the same. Uh, and then our abilities will go off. And then whoever wins uh, is going to get glory points. And that's when you can direct them to these uh, sections here, these rows, where you're going to get glory equal to the amount of axes you have. So uh, for the beginning, it's going to be three points. So the winner of the battle will gain three points. At this point, you also, you also want to let them know it's only the person who actually activated the pillage that could get these benefits here on the map. So if I would have won, I would also get to pillage this and get to move up my marker one space along that track. If Justin would have won, he would have gained the glory points, but he would not have gained uh, that uh, benefit. I also, I do not explain just yet about the plus 10 to glory or plus 20 to glory. I wait until a little bit later to do that. And just letting them know, okay, every... Uh, figure that has been killed off in the battle because everybody who has lost they will lose their figures and they will go into Valhalla what and that they will come back eventually probably at the end of the age usually at the end of the age I don't think anything else kind of lets you uh, bring things back from Valhalla I might be remembering that incorrectly from but there you also want to let them know about their ships and how their ships can only go into fjords right uh, there's this glare that keeps happening, sorry. But yes, so the ships can only go into fjords. So you've already explained all the different areas on the map, except for this, these fjords where uh, the ships can go. And you can just let them know that the ship is, it acts as though it's adjacent to uh, both of these sections on the map. So 
this can actually participate in battle in both instances. So at that point, you could pretty much go ahead and start the drafting phase and saying, yeah, we're gonna do all of these phases together. So let's go ahead and we'll draft. And you go ahead and you start drafting the cards. When you get maybe uh, two cards into it, you wanna let them know, uh, by the time you only have three cards in your hand, we're gonna just you're gonna choose one and discard two of them. So you're not gonna have eight cards in your hand. You're gonna have six, and then you could just keep going from there, round and round, until that is over. And then you could go into that action phase, letting them know, okay, I'm gonna take an action, and then you're gonna take an action. We're each gonna take one action and go around and around until everybody has passed. Now, normally, and I tend to do this for a lot of games, but specifically for Blood Rage, I have it that uh, the new players are going last. So it might be that I'm going first. That way I can show them what I'm doing. Right? I might actually explain to them what I am doing. So, for example, if I have this sea serpent, which is actually my favorite monster in the game. Anyway, uh, I'll say, okay, I'm going to play the sea serpent. I'm... Uh, spending the three rage that it costs and now I have that and with that I get to uh, deploy my sea serpent immediately because I use that upgrade make sure that you let them know about that where you want to invade with your uh, figurines with upgrade cards because it will be the most efficient you want to let them know a little bit about that minute strategy i guess it's not that minute but you know uh you, you don't want them invading and then playing a card and then saying like oh man i could have actually done it the opposite way just show it to them and say like yep so i get to do this immediately cool and then the next person can go and around and around you go always uh explaining what it is you're doing now after about like one or two rounds have gone by, you want to let them know that you're not actually going to keep all of the cards in your hand. At the end of the age, you're going to discard, discard down to one card. That's just to not bamboozle them at the end where it's like, okay, now everybody discard your cards. And then they, and they thought, oh, I thought I was going to get to keep some of these or whatever, right? Uh, that they only get to keep one thing you one. also want to mention as uh, turns are going around, you might wait again, like a, a round or so, maybe two rounds, but letting them know that Ragnarok is upon us. So there is going to be this little uh, token here that's somewhere on the board. And you want to say that right there on that uh, province, Ragnarok is going to hit and for the first round you're showing them you're gonna get two points two glory points for every figure that is destroyed in Ragnarok I usually uh, reiterate this over and over again because people tend to forget uh, and I want them to know that you might want to go into there because you if you're if you die there you die and gloriously. then you go ahead so once you've done all the actions and you do the whole discarding down to one card, you could start flipping over your quest, going into the quest phase, seeing who uh, completed what, gaining glory points and all that great, awesome stuff. So then from the quest, you go into the Ragnarok phase, you have everybody destroyed right into Valhalla. People are gaining their glory points. And ultimately you have everybody release their figures from Valhalla making sure everybody uh they're triggering their abilities if anything lets them gain points or whatever it might be if they release their figures from valhalla and from there that's pretty much it they should know how to play blood rage usually i let people know especially before actually starting to play the game to not worry so much that they might feel a little uh, lost in the beginning because they don't know the cards and that's okay. You, you're not going to do amazing your first playthrough because a lot of the strategy comes from knowing what are in uh, what cards are in those decks and knowing what's going to come out or the possibilities. So that's another reason why you as uh, the person who's teaching the game I would say to maybe hold back a little, maybe just try some other different strategy that you wouldn't normally have tried and just to see how it goes because nobody wants to get crushed, especially their first time playing because they feel sort of bamboozled maybe. And I usually do that for pretty much any game I'm playing. Now, normally I'm not very good at games and I'm really terrible at Blood Rage, so I don't necessarily have to change up my strategy to get uh, whooped in the game, 
but I do try to, you know, hold it back a little bit with newer players and not going straight for all the combos that I know exist in the game. Because the fact of the matter is, I could possibly destroy them and that wouldn't be so much fun for me or them, really. So that's just a but little anyway, tidbit anyway, if you me. have any questions, leave them down below in the comments or let me know, how do you teach Blood Rage? I'd love to hear your feedback. Thanks for watching. You can follow me on social media. I'll catch you next time.